welcome back to Orion today, and we are now joined by the library director, Chase McMunn, and Shane Coppitz. Welcome to our show. Pleasure to be here. Lots going on over at the library. Um, first of all, welcome to the community. I know you've been there a little while, but how are things going as the uh, relatively new director at the library? Things are going really well. Yeah, it's uh, community has been very welcoming. Um, I've had a chance to meet a few people, looking to meet a lot more. Um, obviously, there's a lot to catch up on. Um, filling big shoes from the previous director and uh, library staff just has things going. <coughs> it, it's amazing. Um, we just got a new roof, so that's exciting. <laughs> no more leaks. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm settling <coughs> in and. It's it's really good. Last time I saw you was at the uh, Battle of the Books. Uh, what a fun event that was. That was your first Battle of the Books. What was that experience like? That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd never been to anything quite like that. You know, a bunch of um, um, grade schoolers packed into a gym <laughs> um, and there for reading. So, it was, yeah, I, I really enjoyed <coughs> that event. Um, and it was, it was just a total fun, like, parents holding up their homemade signs supporting it. It, it was. It had all the kind of makings of a sports rally, yeah. but for books, you know, and that's that's always really fun. That's what's so neat about that event. You know, you, you have your athletes, you have your, your, the musicians, and they have their competitions and things that they take they take part in. And it's so great to see these kids who have this love of reading, competing, and getting into it, and wearing the costumes and having fun. <coughs> it's uh, such a great event. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy covering that every year. Um, but what you're here to promote uh, today is the upcoming uh, Summer Reading Kickoff. Uh, I know that's something you do every year where uh, kids are be getting off school, if not already, they're almost off school for the school year. Um, but you want to enc encourage kids to continue reading once school comes to an end. Talk about the Summer Reading Program. Yeah, well that's, that's why we do it, is because um, it's pretty well established that the summer slide, you know, kids are out of school and they're not reading anymore and they start to lose some of those skills. So that, that's why libraries do summer reading programs, is to step in and encourage kids to read. Read for fun, that's, that's a really important aspect of it too, um, is that they're doing it for their enjoyment and so we just step in to, to help make it fun for them by offering prizes, games along the way, um, and then just encourage them to, to continue reading for fun over the summer. Are, are you planning on holding it outdoors again this year? Uh, yep, it's going to be mostly outdoors. I will say this is the first time we've really got, we're going to do the the big kickoff. Um, that'll be this Saturday um, from eleven to one. Uh, we're hoping to see hundreds of people there. Uh, it's the first time in three years that oh, we, wow. we've been able to hold that. So we're really excited uh, to be able to offer that sort of big activity for the community. Uh, we'll have a we'll have a DJ, bounce houses. Um, yeah, lot, lots going on that day to, oh, to entertain that's, people. That's fun. And it brings a lot of people out to the library. So talk about how the summer pre uh, reading program works. So uh, as, and it doesn't just have to be kids, right? Like anyone can take part in it. Um, so they, they read and then they log it. Talk about how that works. Yeah, we have written logs that they can come pick up at the library. They sign up um, and it's for all ages. I should make sure that said we're, we focus on school age a lot of time, <laughs> but you know, we really want those adults modeling that good behavior too. So we've got events for the whole age range. Um, come pick up your um, little log that you keep track of the, the books that you read. And as you log, you can bring it back in, earn prizes. We've got um, a lot of gift cards for businesses in the community. And you, every time you bring it in, you get entered to win the grand prize. Um, so for adults, we have uh, a Kobo e-reader as a grand prize. Um, and we have a hundred dollar gift certificate um, as another prize for teens. So, yeah, every age range, uh, something to read for. Yeah, I see here there are several programs or tiers. So, is it broken into those different age groups? Exactly. That's so, awesome. the other thing that's great is you have the opportunity to have activities here in the community that are also related to books. Um, you can read to your pet and earn. <laughs> earn some activity points. You Aww. can visit a little library. You can use our app. So there are things that will encourage you wherever you are to not only get involved with reading at whatever level you're at, you can also have, that's one of the great things about the theme this year, which is Oceans of Possibilities. 
which is so perfect for a city and a community like Lake Orion to have that opportunity. And there are things that read at the beach, read while you're on vacation if you're going somewhere, read to someone else, check out an audio book. So it's meant to get us away from screens and at the same time involve this kind of visceral activity with the books yeah. in spaces that may you may not think of um, <coughs> and not necessarily um, like library focused or home focused, which is great. That's so awesome. I love my Hoopla app. And I just, you know, I like how we can check out books on that. Um, I didn't know that you guys had a, an adult challenge. I made for myself a challenge on goodreads.com mm -hmm. to do just 12 books this year. And so when I was at the, the book sale, I bought 23 books. And they're out in front and waiting for me. So it's either reading a book or listening to Hoopla, um, you know, maybe while you're walking on the trails or something. Right. So yeah. this is awesome. I like the adult challenge. Do you have something maybe on the website where if someone's looking for titles, do you have any recommendations, that sort of thing that people can go to? Yeah, there's um, there's some recommended reading lists that we have on our website. And um, if you drop in the library, we definitely have a lot of, um, you know, brochures that have recommended staff picks. Um, we have lots of displays from staff picks. So I, I would always recommend going and talking to the staff. They're really the best resource. <laughs> um, they are really familiar with the collection and, and they're really good at listening to what people enjoy yeah. and so it's not you don't just have to rely on a list they, they'll you know hear what you enjoy and they'll, they'll go from there to, to like pick a book just for you. Yeah. That's awesome and the, the summer reading program is also <laughs> an opportunity to meet the director right <laughs> yes. so you're gonna do a meet and greet on Saturday? Yeah that's right um, it'll be during the kickoff so hopefully people have time well, they're there to stop by and say hello. Um, I do want to meet as many people as possible, yes. so we'll be there. We'll have we'll have ice cream um, mm. to try to get people you know, away from <laughs> the DJ way. and you know I'll, I'll <laughs> maybe a little less exciting space, but yeah, um, ply people with some ice cream and get them over to to say hello and um, they can ask me questions if they have questions or just say hello. That's okay too. But yeah, I'd love to to have a chance to to meet with everybody. And of course, uh, there's the kickoff, but then there's the finale. Talk about the finale and when that happens. So there is a teen party. They're going all out this year. Uh -huh. It is on a Friday night. It starts at five o'clock. People do need to register. Okay. So this is a registration basically so that the library knows how many snacks to get, et cetera. Um, we'll have a Velcro wall. We're kidding. <laughs> no. oh, that sounds cool. See, are you excited? I can I tell. I'm a, I'm a team. <laughs> you know. um, we will have bungee basketball. We'll have oh, inflatables. Wow. Um, we'll have a make your own snow cone. Mm -hmm. So you can DIY your snow cones. <laughs> um, and that. again, it's just to celebrate these accomplishments that the teens have made. Um, the next day is the youth party. Mm -hmm. We will have Baffling Bill, a magician who will be available, um, again, 11 to 1 for that. Um, and it really is not only like kickoff, a time to kind of get together, be surrounded by folks who really love to read, really want to participate right. in the community efforts to expand our reading and mm -hmm. think about the way we think about books and just um, information in general, but also to kind of celebrate your accomplishments and be happy that you hit these milestones. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. I want to put each of you on the spot. Okay. What is on your nightstand right now? Um, well, I just finished um, Chronicle of a Death Foretold. Um, I was, I was, I'm trying to alternate between sort of classic or, you know, must read, and then something that's maybe a little, little lighter. <laughs> So that one was the one I finished, and I, I'm not sure where I'm. I was I was going to read. Um, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> anyway, I have 23 That's books. You're on the from, spot. I have 23 <laughs> books. Oh so my Chronicle gosh. of a Death Foretold. What's that um, about? Is it fantasy? You know, or? It's a very small. It's a novella written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who wrote um, a Thousand Years in Sol in Solitude. Solid. I think. Um, so I wanted to kind of ease into his stuff, but it's more of a, like a telling a news story. It's like a journalistic sort of writing um, about a man who 
lives in a small town, I think it's in Columbia, based on a true story from what I understand. But there's a wedding the night before and, and the bride is sort of um, dishonored her family or something and the, the husband returns her and <laughs> returns she, her. She, he returned. This is very like old school stuff, wow. but um, it's sort of just like a, it's got this mystical, magical sort of writing style to it. Um, and it's just about honor, and, but this this man is killed by the bride's brothers. Um, <laughs> but yeah. everybody knew it was going to happen, but nobody stopped it. And so it's mm -hmm. the retelling of that. And it's just really, it's interesting. I mean, it's not really barbaric or anything, but it's um, it was interesting. Just Light summer it. reading. Right. It was <laughs> just really short. I read it in a day. It was oh, done within wow. a day. I thought it was, you know, wow. it's interesting. Shane, what's on your nightstand? Um, I am reading a book of poems by Dave Alvin, who was in a seminal band called The Blasters. He's also been in the band X. Um, some early kind of California 80s punk Ooh. and like um, alt country kind of rockabilly band. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> um, it is called Any Rough Times Are Now Behind You. And oh. it is just a collection of poems that he wrote um, both in the band and on the road and as a solo performer. Interesting. Awesome. So any of them get turned into songs? Because I think that's how songs so, originate sometimes. One of the things, um, any, rough um, um, any Rough Times Are Now Behind You is actually the conclusion of a poem that he basically writes in stanzas about both his touring relationship and a romantic relationship that he's involved in. So it's very interesting and not to give anything away, but it was at the like the many conclusions of many times of, of both relationships that he goes out to eat and that phrase is kind of brought to him while uh -huh. he is okay. eating. Uh -huh. Interesting, I'll have to write that down. Anywhere. It's out of print, so <laughs> oh, okay. you can borrow my copy. <laughs> <There you laughs> <go>. <laughs> The Yay. Yeah. Or you can get an ILL at the library. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Chase, what are you reading this summer? You're not going to believe it. I'm actually reading Pillars of the Earth right now I, uh, by Ken Follett. Um, I, I imagine many people watching have, have already read that. Um, <laughs> I always avoided it because it, it isn't something you're going to read real in a day. Uh, <laughs> it's thick. Um, and uh, I always wonder how a novel about building a cathedral could be really interesting. Um, but someone I know recommended it, said it was um, actually uh, very much a page turner. And I've actually found that to be true. Uh, I, I just started a while ago. So far it is a very uh, fast paced book. Um, and yeah, it is quite the page turner. I guess Ken Follett started writing thrillers in his career. And so Pillars of the Earth was his first historical fiction. Um, and. I, d I generally do enjoy historical fiction. I was a history major in college. Um, I do suffer this affliction, though. If I try to read a history nonfiction <laughs> book, I generally fall asleep. So <laughs> 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 I don't get too far through them. So I do enjoy historical fiction, and I've I found that one to be a really good one so far. Awesome. Yeah. And then otherwise, I also spend a lot of time reading to my son. Um, we I do you know bedtime stories, and so. Uh, We've recently read a few books from the it's the Last Kids on Earth is a Netflix series, and it's also a kind of combination novel, graphic novel. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, read for enjoyment, and he enjoys kids and zombies. So <laughs> we're going to read about kids and zombies. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he doesn't get nightmares. What are you yeah. reading? That's awesome. Literally sitting on my end table next to my bed. I haven't cracked it open yet, but I'm getting there. Is, um, it's, uh, I think it's called Castle on the Hill, and it's, uh, it's about the Chateau Marmont, which is in mm -hmm. L.A., yeah. um, and it is a famous structure that's been in Hollywood forever, and all the movie stars and everything would live there Infamous. at yeah. various times, and it was very behind closed doors sort of a thing, and lots of intrigue. Uh, John Belushi died there. Mm. Um, lots of interesting things things have happened there. So I right. was going to read up about the history of that. And next up, uh, it's a book about this thick. It's the biography of a director named Michael Curtiz who uh, directed some of my favorite movies like Casablanca and The Adventures mm -hmm. of Robin Hood. And it's funny, like I was watching a lot of classic movies 
And I'd go, who directed this? And say, Michael <laughs> Curtiz. And then I'd watch another one and go, that was great. Who directed this? Michael Curtiz. Huh. And it turns out he directed a lot of my favorite movies. So I'm going to crack open his biography real soon. Oh, you'll so. love that, I'm sure. I love entertainment-related stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, One last thing before we go. There's another event coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, the uh, Road Rally. Do you want to promote the Road Rally? Yeah. Yes, let's promote the Road <laughs> Rally. So <laughs> as, um, as with summer reading, this has been on hold because of everything that's happened over the last couple years. Um, we are signing up groups um, in, everybody has to be in one vehicle. If you get stymied by the five person entry, do not worry, we can get you <laughs> beyond that. Um, so you can have as many folks that fit legally, comfortably, and <laughs> safely in your vehicle, um, but you all must be together. You're going to go around the community discovering clues and answering questions. Again, I know, how much fun is that? <laughs> and it's just a great time to, again, spend time with some folks that you care about, maybe family, maybe friends, maybe neighbors. Get together, explore the community, solve puzzles, and head back to the library and possibly win some prizes. There you go. Sounds like you get a blast. You to go to the library, you always get to get good books, and you get prizes and snow cones. <laughs> I know. Right. You go. right. There's no downside. Where is the downside? The library is one of my <laughs> favorite places, honestly. It's, it's, you all do so much for the community. and I mean, just looking through, you know, Orion Living and your section, there's so much stuff. I mean, ugh, you guys do such a good job. Thank We're you. very Thank proud you. to have yeah. um, a wonderful library. Yeah, I, I feel like... The, the library has redefined what a library mm -hmm. can be with the technology and the little room over there that has all the gadgets space, that are available yeah, for the community space, to yeah. use and uh, computer access and all that stuff. Uh, you guys are on the forefront of what a library should be. Truly. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having Absolutely, us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, any contact info you want to give out before we go? Uh, how can people reach, uh, reach you at the library? Um, come in. The website. <laughs> yeah, <come in. laughs> the website has all our events. Yeah, if if you want a full list of all the events that we have upcoming, you can go to orionlibrary.org uh, and click on events. And right now, there's a big banner for summer reading, so you can click on that and learn all you need to know about summer reading. Um, but yeah, uh, if you search, if you find our phone number, you can always give us a call, and we'll be happy to pick up the phone and talk to you too. All right. Awesome.